Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Rethinking the Paleolithic Mind at this year's Virtual Evolution Conference. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my research explores a deep route to mankind's creative capacity by looking at how hunter-gatherers viewed their cosmos through the study of Upper Paleolithic cave art. In this presentation, we will explore how the human mind may have learned to think in time and space. When most of us think about time and space, the name Albert Einstein comes to mind and not cave artists. Einstein's perspectives were in the realm of physics and not the practical and often unconscious recognition of time and space. Thinking in time and space does not appear to be innate among primates. We can look to the work of Yale economist Keith Chen and psychologist Lori Santos, who studied the behavior of non-human primates in order to be able to understand what makes the human mind unique. Chen and Santos explore a kind of monkey economics, whereby capuchin monkeys are tested for their ability to recognize changing values in money and exchange them for foods. From the perspective of this discussion, the capuchins buy in the moment and do not appear to have the ability to save for potential scarcity in the future. They eat marshmallows until full, throw them up, and then come back for more. In other words, capuchin monkeys don't save their money for a rainy day and cannot think forward in time. Timekeeping is not a modern or even an ancient concept among Homo sapiens. We can go back in time to the Upper Paleolithic in Europe, where we will find early records of timekeeping by the moon. Here is a running red deer stag, as noted by the full antler set and raised neck that is calling the females in during a cool autumn morning. Below the red deer are 13 marks leading to a box. People have commonly counted 13 nights from the first crescent moon to the full moon. This is also when red deer begin to mate or rut, as they are biologically cued by both the light and dark cycles of both the sun and moon. We find the same count with other male animals in the Lascaux cave. Our reference for the lunar time undulates comes from the Canadian zoologist, Dr. Anthony Sinclair, who back calculated the dropping of Serengeti wildebeest juveniles to show that the start of the rut was at the full moon. We have records of herders such as the Chukchi in Siberia who live by the rhythms of the moon, or rather live with the rhythms of reindeer, which are biologically cued by light dark signals from both the sun and moon. I suggest that the initial awareness of time in humans is tied to the woman's menstrual cycle, which is on average 29 and a half days, and the same number of days as in the cycle of the moon. Women who live and work in close quarters commonly synchronize their cycles, which would put a group on the same lunar time. At some point, we learned that there was an advantage in gathering tidal foods and hunting game in the cycles of the moon. This is still not a mechanism of long-term thinking in time and space. One cannot navigate by the moon unless you are following reindeer, Serengeti wildebeest, or other migrating animals. A calendar of the moon, stars, and sun is what one really needs to measure time and space and how we did it in antiquity. But when did this start? Surely cave people could see patterns of stars in the night sky. Was this an ability that was somehow part of our evolution as human beings? Or did we suddenly learn how to define ourselves in time and space during the Upper Paleolithic? We may find early evidence of thinking in time and space among some of the oldest artworks in the world at the Upper Paleolithic Cave of Monte El Castillo on the Iberian Peninsula. Where on the 10 meter cross panel called the Garrow Discs, there are more than 80 red discs that are on average about the size of the palm of your hand. One disc among them has been dated to at least 34,000 years ago. On this panel, we find an archetypal teacher and apprentice. Note the wide, interested eyes of the apprentice and how the teacher speaks into his ear. Let's listen in. On the shoulder of the teacher is a fledgling golden eagle that stands about a foot tall. This is roughly a mid to late time period for the young eagle. There's also this masked cosmic man whose left leg and right arm are raised. The right hand holds what appears to be an egg. His left arm has a feathered texture. On this panel, we find a speckled mare. She appears to be leaping with her head turned away from us as if agitated. Our cosmic man merges with the speckled mare to become what the ancient Greeks would have interpreted as a centaur. 
On our journey, we encounter a mother Iberian lynx with a slightly tipped head and whose kitten pushes up against her ruff. This is a mid-June time period based on the stage of the kitten and is consistent with that of the fledging eagle. We enter a marine environment where we encounter a giant crab lurking under a ledge. There's a spinning bottlenose dolphin. Note that the dolphin is depicted above the surf. We find our hero appearing to be in the air. How does he elevate above the water? The artist reveals that the dolphin assists him. In this image, our hero wears a red pelt. We may be getting ahead of ourselves in the story. We reach the opposite shore, which is now Western North Africa, to be greeted by a monk seal. Where there is a woman in distress, see her sunken chin and cheeks, sorrowful eyes, and long braided hair accentuated by the red disc. There is a spitzish dog with its tail flopped forwards. Present day DNA studies indicate that the spitz is one of the oldest known dogs. We encounter a Barbary ape, which is indigenous to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco, and a juvenile giraffe who hides her neck behind her mother's. There's an elephant drinking water from a pool and another with a raised trunk. Turn your head sideways and you see that they are the same elephant. Our hero enters and swims in the pool. See his head and arms freestyle swimming. Our hero rises again, but this time walks up a hill at the top of the panel where he encounters a lion being licked by a lioness. Our hero is unsure about whether he should approach them. Is he ready to battle this apex terrestrial predator? There's an inner conflict, the crisis moment where a hero struggles with himself in a different time and place. Perhaps this speaks to Einstein's distinction between past, present, and future as being only a stubbornly persistent illusion. The lion takes the initiative and paws our hero to the ground. The hero prevails, becoming the apex predator, and as a symbol of that great strength, he wears the red spotted pelt. We continue on to find a mother bear watching her cubs climb a tree for safety. And then encounters a large crocodile. Our hero gets mixed up in the affairs of the crocodile, but appears to stay away from her sharp teeth. There's an ostrich that seems stressed about something. There's another bird, the now extinct great auk. On the journey home, we see a breaching humpback whale. Our hero rides home in the belly of the whale that is reminiscent of the biblical Jonah and the whale. So that our great epic story can be passed down to a new apprentice by the now Wiseman teacher. On our journey, we have found the Garib Dis depicts terrestrial animals that are indigenous to the Iberian Peninsula and the Atlas Mountains of Western North Africa. On this journey, we have walked and swam from Cantabria, Spain to Jebotobacal, Morocco, over 30 days and roughly 1,700 kilometers in each direction. This journey in time and space was not just across land and sea, but also the night sky. We can see the constellations Hercules, Agala, Pegasus, Cetus, and Pisces. The red-haired man is Orion with his spitz dog that is Canis Major. Aruga and Taurus are the elephant. The swimmer is Perseus. The eyes of the Barbary ape in the constellation Gemini are Castor and Pollux. The lion is Leo, of course, and the bear is Ursa Major. The crocodile is Draco. The ostrich is Cygnus, and the whale is Pisces traveling north. From the time capsule left to us by the cave artist, we have learned a great deal about his journey and mental abilities. We have learned that he not only had the capacity to think backwards and forwards in time, but also with great navigational precision over immense expanses of terrestrial and celestial space. This ability to consciously think in time and space is what certainly separates us from other primates. Maybe this innate ability evolved with our brains somewhere along the way, after the separation from our common ancestor with the chimpanzee, and is part of what distinguishes us as being truly human. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak at the Virtual Evolution 2021 conference. More on my work can be found at these sites. I am always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences.